coverage here of the Mana Trader series. My name is Corey Baumeister. That's Ross Merriam. And we're going to be bringing you coverage all day. We're heading into round number four here. So we're switching formats. Players are putting away their dungeon seeking cards. And we're heading to Format of the Gods Modern. And we got our match all queued up. So we're just going to jump right in. We're checking out some of the players that are really, really doing pretty well. You know, they're playing, uh, you know, I would say the deck of the tournament so far. Um, I think really every aspect about uh, Sneaky Masato's deck, I think is just really perfect. I don't know. You got any more BS reasons why we're just pu <laughs> putting Breach on here because we want to? You got well, anything? We're really trying to, you know, set up this come from behind story. Yes. You know, these players might have had a rough go of it in Legacy, but they're still mm. in the tournament. They can still win it. Uh, and now they've entered into a format where they've made a much wiser deck choice. Yes. And we're hoping to see it pay off for them. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so it's not, it seems like we do have hands for our Arakdos uh, scam players. And we got Breach up top. And unfortunately, y'all, no, no huge secret here. All jokes aside, these players are not having a good start. They are 0-3. But you know what? If there's only one Breach deck in the deck or in the tournament, dang it, we're going to watch one match of <laughs> Breach, okay? I've, uh, this is where our biases come in as casters. Adrian's also a big Breach fan as well, so we, we had to go with it for our first one. Yeah, and uh, Kane's opponent, Sprouts, playing a little Arakdos scammy scams. A little scammeroo. How do you like this matchup? Uh, it's a scary one for sure. Yeah. You know, it, it feels like if I get to turn five, I win. Yes. And, you know, but you just don't get to turn five all that often. I totally agree. I think this is one of the matchups where I consider it a very good matchup, but if they do the grief undying thing or they do the fury undying thing and i have bad draws on the top of my deck then i'm just gonna lose but half the time they do this they have this kind of draw and it's like wow that's really annoying uh yeah they can't even go for the old grief malice yeah. play here because they don't have the other black card but then i'm just like yeah whatever I, i'm just gonna beat you from <laughs> that on uh from then on so Interestingly here from Seref's side, decides to not cast the Rogovan on turn one yeah. so that they can Fury Scam on turn two, potentially, and yeah. maybe turn three. We'll see if that pays off for them. Because Rogovan is a card that puts your opponent to the test. Like, do you have it? Definitely. And if it goes unanswered, we could have just been casting these ele you know, elementals. Yeah. And, and that's truly how it works. Rogovaning up, um, up against the Breach deck is usually insanely good against our deck too, you know, because like all there's so many zero drops that you can hit. Uh, there's so much cheap stuff that you can play that is like a colorless and blue. Like, I mean, if you Ragavan and you hit a Shredder, you're going to play it off of, uh, you know, the Rakdos scam side. Ragavan connecting against Breach is just very good. They have red mana. So if you hit Expressive Iteration, you can usually cast that. That's an awesome one to cast off of Ragavan. Yep, exactly. So we are seeing a bobble being cracked and decides not to have the card that Kane picked up. I'm going to fetch it up there, go to Sprout's turn. Kane does leave a mana open, so definitely representing a lightning bolt or an unholy heat here. Yeah, decided to shock there and that there's no real usually these lists don't have consider i, I saw a list recently from um canister he's yep. got two considers in his deck yeah canister definitely his list is, is very interesting i mean i like saw three emery's in his list a lot of things seem crazy to me but canister is a great player you know he just won a challenge with this so i i usually am not uh too argumentative of his list although i do like the more streamlined consistent lists um, what do you think of Kane's list so far? Like, what kind of list would you be playing on this event? This is uh, the exact main deck I registered last week. Okay, so. okay. <laughs> so maybe copied you. I mean, realistically, you did yeah. just take second at one of these big events, so that makes and a lot of sense. Sideboard looks pretty similar as well. Okay. Uh, I think the I think there's three different cards in a sideboard, and one of them is turning Soul Guy Lantern into a Torment Script. So not much of a difference. I do agree with that for what it's worth. The amount of times when I've actually drawn a card off Lantern, maybe literally once or twice. So I made that change as well. Uh, that is one of the changes Canister made. That uh, you know I kind of looked at his list and I'm like, hmm, that seems like nonsense. That seems like nonsense. I'm like, ooh, but good point on this. You know, and, and kind of adjusted things. Uh. Grinding station here from Kane, though, threatening to combo potentially next turn with the bobble in the graveyard. Yep. Um, 
That said, we did just pick up a Blood Moon on Sprout's side. Could cast it with just one, it. one black source left over. That is the one aspect. I've been teetering on the Gigantha build with Graveshot or Thassa's Oracle. For the most part, I've noticed basically no difference, except I have to think a little harder when I have the Graveshot side, which I'm not a fan of. Don't get me <laughs> wrong. But Godzilla decides not to go for the Blood Moon. But one of the scenarios that I have liked Graveshot Gigantha for is against Blood Moon specifically. That's pretty much the main reason for it. Just being able to combo off with just red mana pretty easily, I think, is a big deal. But w would you also like a grinding station? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a waste or a Sprout useless says, card. Sprout says no. Yeah, and an interesting way of playing all of these uh, scenarios so far from Sprouts. Um, you know, no regiment on turn one, but I think Sneaky Masato probably did have a bolt with how he was playing at least. Uh, but no way to truly know. So there is a potential for Kane to combo right now. Uh, he doesn't know it, but there's no way for Sprouts to interact at instant speed in his hand. Mm -hmm. uh, so a land and a breach, but it's going to have to be a fetch land so that we can recast the bauble. Yep. And then we're in a bit of an awkward spot with no extra cards. Yeah. So, yeah, I like taking one extra turn here, but it, uh, because the, the combo is not deterministic at that point. You need, yeah. You, you need a spare card. I almost don't think it's possible at that point. You know, just because, like, if you ever just hit Oracle as one of those cards that you need to escape, yeah. you're then not doing it. So, yeah, I think that's a, one of those scenarios where if you absolutely have to go for it, yeah, sure, try, see what you can do kind of thing. But for the most part, there's no huge rush yet. Uh, so wait a little bit. But that being said, Blood Moon is here to be the fun police where we could even see Grief pitching a dying malice, Blood Moon, and Regavan here. Yeah. To clear the way, you know, like something like that, I think is what Sprout should be looking at a big turn like this, because it's pretty likely that you're dead if you just do one of these kind of coy save my resource turns uh, for for Kane's next turn. Yeah. Fortunately, Kane does have the drum draw naturally. So yeah. Raghavan will give him access to blue mana to cast Emery. Yep. And big then, deal. then the Mox Ambers will start making blue. So Blood Moon, not a death sentence here from mm -hmm. Kane's battlefield with the drum. Uh, and does have, you know, full six cards. He could be, uh, you know, setting up for a big turn even yeah. without Breach. And for other people that are maybe trying to learn Breach, it's a very complicated deck. And if you have enough resources in your graveyard, Blood Moon actually doesn't affect it. You can do this whole Ragavan, bring it back, bring back Drum, add Blue, then get Emery-style play. But what that does demand is an extra seven or eight cards in the graveyard to be able to escape. And when you're at this low level of resource... It's not really something that you have just laying around. If you were to have like 14 cards in Graveyard after a long game and then Blood Moon hits, Kane can still easily win through that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Blood Moon does make it a little more difficult to stock that yard. Okay, just Blood Moon here. I don't know if that's going to be enough disruption if Kane's hand is kind of ideal, you know? If Kane's hand is ideal, the game's over. Yeah, 100. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I, yeah. I don't think... You know, Blood Moon um, alone is going to be enough here, even though we don't have a lot of cards in our graveyard yeah. uh, at the moment. The ideal here is Underworld Breach, Raghavan, Emery. If yeah. Kane has those three cards, the game is over. Yep. Okay. Got a Breach, but uh, I wonder, are we going to take the risk and try to hit a Raghavan? Before you hit Oracle? And, and then <laughs> and then sack the drum to the station? Easily possible. So we can sack the bauble with the untapped trigger on the stacks. We keep our station. That's three irrelevant cards. So we'll mm -hmm. probably just loop again. Yeah, and could easily, this is the kind of start that, you know, Kane would for sure do. We would do as well. If you just have a bauble in hand too, and if you see Oracle on your yard, be like, okay, whatever. Now I'll play my second bauble, and now I have enough cards to kind of go off. If there's even one bauble in Kane's hand, this should be GG. You know, or, or a Mox Amber. Anything that costs zero mana. But if there is no zero, the goal here is to hit a Raghavan before you hit the Thoracle. Yeah, but then, I mean, and it, that's putting in turn that Emery is in hand as well. Emery yeah. has to also be in hand for that to, to be a thing. So, and Kane did it pretty fast, you know, so I would lead, this would lead me to believe that he has another zero drop in hand. Otherwise, this is risky, but there There's is the monkey. Raghavan. So now we can play Raghavan, exile the other three. Use, if we have a zero. Yeah, use that to turn our drum on and then 
yeah, sack the drum and then play zero from hand. Yep. And now considering if Kane were to have Mox Amber, you want to play it first in case there's a removal spell. At least you get an extra red mana in the pool. So maybe that's what Sneaky Masato is thinking about. I would be thrilled if my opponent tried to kill Ragavan. I don't even care about the mana from Mox. Yeah. In, in fact, I might sequence it differently just to induce the removal spell on the <laughs> yeah, Ragavan. Yeah, yeah, like, please do. Yeah. Please do. All I care about is the mana off the drum. Yeah. What is going on here? Okay. So there is a Mox. This is strange to me. Yeah, hard to hard to know what's going on without knowing Kane's hand. Yeah. If this is Regavan here, this is kind of scary. Because you would want to... Uh, yeah, it's kind of... Without another zero in hand, these plays don't make a ton of sense because you could get Mox Amber first and then Ragavan and use all the cards in your graveyard. But then you're getting rid of Drum. And there's there goes your blue, which you need. In indeed. And now this is one of the scenarios where you don't need Drum if you do play the Grape Shot list. Um, you know, I think it's so close 99% of the time that it doesn't matter, but there are definitely fail times when Thassa's Oracle is the only thing that would win, you know, gaining an absurd amount of life, force and negation, um, scenarios that don't happen that often in modern as we look now at the top tier decks, but it's not zero, you know, it's not a zero amount of scenario. Um, and as you said earlier, Blood Moon is the biggest of those scenarios. Yeah, and that's it really what... is. I mean, that's the only reason that I made the shift from the deck that I'm playing right now, and which is usually Gigantha, Grape Shot, two Fables, two Shredders kind of thing for the flex slots. Um, but the one thing that I've been considering is I think Gigantha is complete trash. I'm, I'm just considering playing one Grape Shot, one Oracle, just to have all my bases covered like that. And I actually think that would be pretty good. The amount of times I brought him back Elk is quite low. <laughs> it's so not great. But I want another sideboard slot. So I think that's the next list I want to try. Okay. I think we're sacking the Mox Amber again, but th this doesn't really get us anywhere. Yeah. We have six cards in hand. Some of them have to be relevant. Yeah. And the thing is, oh, there goes Grinding Station. And there's Emery. So that's Regavan. Add red, bobble. I don't know. I think this might just be one of those turns where... It, and honestly, came as one card in the graveyard short. If if that Ottawara was a fetch land instead, then you're fine because you get to escape everything, leave drum in the yard, and then eventually you'll get blue. But as it stands right now, especially without a grinding station, this might have just been a oops. But you know what? To be fair, no fault of either of the players. When I'm at a, a not so great start as both <laughs> these players, my thought level goes down. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I just wish we knew it was in Kane's hand. I know, I know. Was this all just an attempt to set up a value breach? You know, there's there's a lot of possibilities for what was, Kane was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, there but were a lot of I, them. I guess we'll probably have a chance to find out, because I, I don't think the game is ending this turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think that is. We'll probably get the grief to uh, uh, check out the hand here pretty soon. I'm guessing we're going to see a Raghavan get cast and a bubble. <laughs> I mean, maybe. You might have to put that drum into play. Or maybe, um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah the... Raghavan and just put drum back. Not we'll, great. Well, if we play the drum, uh, yeah, I guess we'd have to go Raghavan then drum. Oh, playing the drum and we exiled the bubble. So uh, <laughs> I guess the turn is ending now. Okay. Oh, we had a land drop to make. Okay, okay, so we can play Raghavan. Kane decides he doesn't want to do that. All right, let's see what we got here from Sprout. Maybe this was just set up for next turn and we have another Breach. And he just wanted to, like, mill through his deck and get everything set up. Because if we can go Breach Station next turn, we'll leave the Emery. Yeah. But uh, then how do we cast the Emery? Yeah. Still need a Raghavan. <laughs> 
seemed like a bit of a blunder to me. That's the only thing I can kind of think of is like, didn't do the number exactly right. And to be fair, like I said, we were one escape card away. Yeah. Because if you could leave Drum in that graveyard and have Regavan, um, uh, Regavan in play plus a zero drop, and you keep going that way, uh, I think you can still do it. But fortunately for Kane, his opponent just drew a black card, which is going to allow a grief scammy scam. <laughs> yeah, terminate not too needed here. So it's time to scam. You get to stack this in such a way that you get to play around removal too, which is so annoying. Yeah, it's my least favorite part of it. Yeah, same. <laughs> it's like one unholy heat doesn't even break up the double and you can't even cast it, you know? So, all right, we're going to see, we'll get some revealed cards. Let's check out those revealed cards there, Adrian, to see what was going on. There it was another breach. Okay. Probably not for long. Looks like there was another unholy heat as well. Yep, yep. So a little awkward there that we went for the unholy heat on the Raghavan. You know, his opponent yeah. ha hadn't tried to scam him, but that was the w first turn where leaving yeah. up both removal spells would have been wise. God, it's still brutal, though. Like, you get ultimate scammed if you go double removal spell at grief. Like, you still have well, to you, use both of you, them. You just, let the, you just let the trigger resolve. So that they'll take the breach and then just won't go for the undying man. Oh yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah, yeah. So you're still right, gonna, the right. problem is you're still going to lose the breach and you're under a blood moon. Yeah. So Kane has two spells in his hand that he can't cast, and just well now he's got a bunch of cards in his graveyard. Just needs to rip a third breach. Yeah. Although I think he milled one in that turn. I think there can we check out his exile zone? Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's there's, there's a there's single one. there's one left. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. But it, it, it'll win the game. Yeah. You just go... Uh, oh, dash to Raghavan. That's just gonna, probably just going to get terminated. Yep. Oh, no. We're, we're, we're just going to use it to uh, iteration smart. smart. Oh, that is smart. Yeah, you need to get that going. And, and you don't want it to die to a fury, so you just dash it. All right, that, was a, that was a nice little play. But the terminate is still in hand, right? Didn't we have to pitch something? There's a there's a bolt to the exile zone, so bolt will deal with the grief. Okay. We'll see what we drew. Yeah, it was a pitch terminate. Yeah, so I, I maybe there was two terminates. I'm not 100 no, it, percent sure. There, it's a Ragavan that came back. The terminate oh, got okay. Exiled. Okay, so yeah, maybe so yeah, just a slight hand delay. Is scary for your rag. Okay. Um, and yeah, we're on, we're basically just on fourth breach or, or bust. Yeah, you get to do that now. Let's see what cards were put into hand. It was terminate. It was a terminate. Okay, okay. Oh, the Raghavan died to the breach. That, yeah, that's, that's, that right, that's right, yeah, that's right. We should never doubt the almighty uh, <laughs> hand viewer here. Yeah, that's never lured us wrong before. Hey, you take that back. <laughs> you leave that hand viewer alone, okay? It's tried its best. There's land five, so one of these Furies will just get cast as a 3-3 double striker. And... Yep. That's going to limit Kane's turns. <laughs> but to be fair, Ragavan can still be cast into Shredder. Like, yeah. just cast it now. Why not? Well, that, might still want to, <laughs> uh, might still want to escape it. Who knows? And this is the proper sequencing. You want to play a spell and then Shredder as your second card. It's always ideal. Oh, well, <laughs> we did it. <laughs> High five. <laughs> we like that. We're unbiased commentators, we swear. <laughs> it's the best deck ever. It's the best deck ever. <laughs> no one can beat it. It's the best deck ever. Well, 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 Kane, starting the commenting time, let's uh, let's switch to the booth real quick <laughs> and just get some real-life reactions of what it's like to be breaching your opponent. Oh, best deck, not close, not close. Underworld Breach. Let's get that Oracle in play. <laughs> oh, baby. When you need one card, just ask for it. It's there. <laughs> All right, we'll come back to the match. <laughs> <laughs> and here we're back to in serious commentary. We're going to see that Emily coming into play. That's going to generate one blue mana here with Mox Amber. That's going to untap the grinding station. We're going to do that again over and over and over until those 13 cards in Kane Reinhardt's deck are at a zero, and then that Thassa's Oracle will be cast, and that will be GG. Welcome to Breach. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be very careful clicking that you don't exile that Oracle. Exactly. That really is the only thing. I haven't done it yet, but uh, I have highlighted it once, 
but it wasn't my third card highlight. I was like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> Nelly. <laughs> Let's not get too crazy here. All right, all right. This is the start. Yeah. This is the start that our hero needed to go <laughs> back, to get back in the zone for this, that 6 0 run. This is really exactly how this matchup plays out. Yes. You, know, you, you have Breach in your deck and you draw it in, and then the game ends. Yeah. Uh, pay no attention to. Not comboing the first time and then bailing out of it. That you know what? That was Kane flexing with the deck. Be like, check it. I cannot win the game right now and still win the game later. No big yeah. deal. This does reveal one interesting aspect, and I think critical aspect of the matchup from the Racto side. Mm. Sprouts had the ability to scam in a fury early. Yeah. From, from turn one. Yeah. Yep. And sure decided not to wanted to hold it back to maybe deal with some creatures. Yep. Gave Kane a ton of time here. Kane was on 10 life. That's yeah. two attacks with a, with a scammed fury that could have ended this game much long, you know, much later. But was the undying thing? Isn't that the one that it, is that the one where it comes back with the counter? No, yeah. no, okay. Or yeah, that one is undying okay. analysis. That's the yeah. one we needed, but yeah, that would have been you know. But this was what turn seven. Yeah, yeah. So it's that's six attacks you potentially missed with a four four double striker. Yeah, or not playing just Regavan right away. I think there yeah. were some weird plays on both sides of this game, to be honest. Um, but all right, let's let's check out the one side yep. that truly matters. How do how do you sideboard uh, for the scam matchup? So, so I can judge you. Uh, so we've got a Tormod's Curve in Kane sideboard. We've got two Wear Terrors, a Pithing Needle, two Engineered Explosives, two Spell Fears, a Draneth Magistrate, a Prismatic Ending, a two Mystical Dispute, a Teferi Time Raveler, and two Fury. I like the Teferi. I like the two Furies. Uh, and that is essentially it. I don't really like bringing in the Graveyard Hate to try to stop scams. Especially when you're on the draw. I like just ways to catch up from an early Fury or Grief. Mm -hmm. Bouncing it with Teferi, I still think, is still fine. It also yeah. stops later scams. Yeah. Uh, it can also, you know, potentially insulate you from Blood Moon. Uh, and then you've got the Furies that you can just pitch to deal with, with uh, those creatures. Yeah, Fury is a card that has been, like, in and out of my list. And there are times when that card just looks insane. Absolutely insane. Like, that's maybe my 16th and 17th sideboard slot right now and I, I really don't know what to cut but if i cut gigantha i think that's the first card i put in the only difference i would do is on the dry bring in the prismatic ending uh for regavan as well and like there's a chance that you could get blood moon with it yeah to be fair you know my list plays fable too so you get more treasures where you can theoretically hit a grief i've actually prismatic ended a fury before which is pretty <laughs> cool um, but then you can also clear the way for Blood Moon a little bit, well, and maybe Chalices if they have it. There's a Chalice in the sideboard from Sprouts. Also two copies of Leyline in the Void, so you might want some Wear Tears wow. in an open deck list event. Yeah, good uh, point, good point. They've also got three EEs. Some number of those are good to deal with Saga Tokens. Mm -hmm. A couple Fatal Pushes I like for their er more early removal. I think a Braid is too slow, and there's not really artifacts you want to target. Um, Turok seems kind of slow to me. You got a Magus of the Moon, which is much worse than Blood Moon because all their removal is red. Yeah, and the Necromancer is probably fine too, just to you know stop the combo entirely. I still remember the one time it was so funny. I was like watching one of your matches at at an SCG event, and someone just Necromancer you. They're like, "I got you now," and they just named Grinding Station, and then you just played Breach the next turn <laughs> and drew like seven cards. I'm like, "Oops." <laughs> well, we <laughs> see one. All right, we got both hand cams, so we got that going for us. And we do see a Leyline of the Void in a seven-card hand for Sprouts. Has an early Fury to deal with creatures. Has a Dothy Voidwalker, which is quite good. Yeah. Well, it looks like they were on a Mulligan on a Mulda Six. Mulda Six, so, still pretty good. So the Voidwalker went downstairs because they want a Night's nice Whisper to undo the Mulligan. Want to keep the Furies to deal with threats. Uh, Fast is Oracle, an unfortunate card to have in the opener for Kane. Um, I I feel like I draw that card more than any card in my entire <laughs> deck. You know, like, <laughs> hey, the Bobble there being a great draw. I think I know the answer to your question, but do you crack that bottle? Um, well, the Emery is not very good in the face of this yeah, ley line, point, so point. I think I would. I yeah. want to make sure I hit my land drops, maybe play a different threat, and get the, the saga going. Especially if you didn't bring in wear terrors. Then you just got to think, like, Kane needs land number three and just start going ham with uh, Aga tokens here. Yeah. Um, but like yeah, he, I mean... Uh, disagree. Because I imagine if the ball was getting sacrificed, it would be have been before the fetch land. Yeah, you would think. Yeah, it's pretty interesting to me because Emory is a straight brick right now. Unless, actually, it's kind of crazy. Let me think about it. Um, okay, no, that doesn't work. Unless you just like actively mill yourself. But if you have Thassa's Oracle in hand, you can be a little more aggressive about milling. Now goes for the bobble, so I guess wanted to get the Emory down. 
maybe trying to bait some removal. A braids came in for sprouts, and their hand is full of removal. Yeah, I, I like a braid though. There's a chance when your opponent's comboing from low resources, you could just hit the grinding station and break up that combo. You know? Yeah, that's not bad. Maybe it's better than terminate. Yeah, I think so. I think because so. It, it, as a destroying artifact will kill a construct no matter the size too. Yeah. So yeah, it is probably just better than terminate. Hundred percent better. Sure. Yeah. It's not a card I would think to bring in, but, you know. Okay, Island off the top is huge for a, a plethora of reasons. Being yeah. good against Blood Moon is awesome, too. Yeah, now we've got the got the Saga down. And this is, uh, you know, both players' hands chock full of removal. Ooh. <laughs> Say the Saga being the key card here to generate some card advantage yeah. for Kane, but EE, very good against that. So now here's the scenario, like, how aggressive does Sprouts want to be into this Ragavan? And decides not aggressive whatsoever. We have noticed that Sprout has been very, very calm about, uh, you know, certain things. Not not going ham. And to be fair, here, going ham would have been quite bad. You know, evoke a fury, EE -E away a construct or a braided away just to connect. Like, I don't really love that one. But, you know, connecting with Ragavan against Breach is very good. Definitely. But, yeah, I think with this much removal, you want to let this saga... Go out, use yeah. your EE, kill the Embryon Unstep, untap, sweep the Sagas. Yeah. And just crush from there, especially with getting Drum, which, you know, I don't blame. Yeah. I don't blame Kane here, but you're going to be able to kill Regavan so it doesn't connect. But outside of that, it's going to be love with two lands, no creatures, and that expressive iteration will have some heavy lifting. Yeah, it is definitely the best card to have here. Yeah, that's true. So. All right. The beatdowns. Doing what Emery does best. Attacking <laughs> for one. I've done it. Oh, yeah. I'm not happy about it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Leyline of the Void is low-key one of the the sneaky cards. The sneaky better cards. That, that's an aggressive play from Kane. If there was an Undying Malice there, you just leave yourself open to getting attacked now by yeah. that. By that Ragavan. But... Yeah, you should maybe just do that before you attack, right? Yeah. yeah. No, no punishment, fortunately for him. Yeah, once again, we're going to have this stage of the tournament. Uh, you know, the loose goose plays happen a little bit more frequently for me. I'm talking about myself specifically. <laughs> and we'll see how uh, Sprouts decides to handle this swarm of threats. I guess not really concerned with the Emery because of the ley line out. So yeah. content to take that damage and use the EE to sweep up these Karn Sprouts. Yeah, the Emery is a dual land though right now. So I'd be snap killing that personally. Yeah. Because now you're just giving your opponent three land. Kind of for no reason, so I don't, I don't, I don't love this play. I think I would have either braided Emery or the drum. You know, I, yeah. I think the braiding the drum is is perfectly reasonable. Yeah, I agree. Keeps it exiled too. Mm -hmm. So we see a flooded strand from Kane getting up lands to cast these furies could also be very helpful. Yeah, and Sprouts at thirteen, and there's a bolt in hand. You know, plus an attack with Emery. Sprouts is at an effect of nine life. That's not incredibly. Uh, you know, off the rails here. Oh, is it Thassa's Oracle time? I think it's Emery time. Emery. Uh, they just made a blue mana. I assume they were casting an Emery that they found off this iteration. They have one unknown because the strand just got yeah. played. But whatever card they put in their head off the iteration is unknown right now. I think it's a get that Thassa's Oracle onto the battlefield, look at the top three, and uh, find some goods. <laughs> I wouldn't be opposed. Oh, yeah. I I think I'd do it. At this point, you know you're not uh, yeah. really combo. Especially, this would dictate, my play would be dictated by if I brought in any wear toes or any ways to deal with Leyline. But automatically, you have to ferry. So there's ways to at least, you know, stop it for a little bit. And yeah. there's ways to just deal with the combo with Teferi here. You just tick up, and then during your next turn, then bounce, and then combo. Now, now I think it's the Oracle, and Kane instead thought, you know what, I want to peek at the top card, and if it's good, I'll wait on this yeah, Oracle. that's expressive iteration. But I mean, honestly, for Thoracle playing it right now, I'd want to play it and look for expressive iteration, probably. Yep. That's the, the best card, probably, so far. Or Teferi would be quite good. <laughs> I'd also be looking for Urza Saga, but I don't know about the Blood I like, you know, yeah. I mean yet. Yeah, and I would definitely be trying to get white mana with this Flooded Strand, probably a Sacred Foundry. If they play the same amount of duels. You just yeah. said your same list that you played, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
one, the Sacred Trinity one Howl of Fountain. Excellent, excellent. Could also get the other Steam events if they wanted to do the that. The perfect combination. Not Canister a... also plays three Saga, three Emery. Yeah, those are those are numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, his reasoning, I remember watching his stream, his reasoning was Saga, you can have those games where, like, you know, it's just, you you top deck that for your third land, and, and now all of a sudden you're, like, have two land on turn four, you don't draw another one, and it's like, I feel like those games are so bad. But I'm like, oh. have you considered the games where you win on the spot with that card? Oh, oh Shredder. Shredder! That's even better. That is good. Now, I mean, there's plenty of ways to deal with this all in Sprout Town, but Five total toughness is kind of annoying for the Fury plan. Okay, there is expressive iteration. Perfect. Had well, it. The thought Had is it. less perfect, but let's see if uh, <laughs> if Sprouts decides to go for the Blood Moon instead. I would have braided that Shredder and then Thoughtseize, I think. Yeah, I'm I'm with you too. And then try to clear the way a little so bit. The Blood Moon isn't that effective when there's Island Drum already on the battlefield. Yeah. So. And Shredder is just the most threatening card on the whole battlefield, so yeah, I love yeah, this. this is an excellent turn for Sprouts. Getting paid off for not being aggressive with the Abrade on that yeah, Emery. Absolutely. Yep. My, uh, my Abrade would have been already in the graveyard, but also Shredder wouldn't have been on the, ba the battlefield yet, <laughs> yeah. because they couldn't have cast it. So it would have been, would have been a little different, but Shredder next turn would have been still great. Shredder into E, Expressive Iteration, loot away one of these uh, bad cards would have been excellent. Iteration does go to the exile zone off that thought seize plus a ley line. Hmm, just what we wanted there. Another Emery. Uh, well, very... eh, I mean, 32 cards left in library. Yeah, now it's the Oracle time. Oh, baby. All right. And for people who don't know what this card actually does, because most of the time it's just end the game on the spot, you do get to look at three cards. You have the choice between putting one of them on the top of your library. If not, they either shuffle in or go to the bottom. One. I go to the bottom. Okay. I go to the bottom. Random order. All right. A yeah, grief. Uncastable a grief. Good card either. The Fury is not particularly good. It doesn't even want to play the Blood Moon because it doesn't want to lock himself out of the grief next turn. Yeah. Potentially. And I mean, okay. these are. Well, now the, blo the Blood Moon is about to get cast, but yeah. now Fury is going to get cast. So you're probably going to have to evoke one of your Furies. Yeah. Oh. Oh no. We attacked with both. Yeah, that's odd. That's odd, because you'd think you'd want to be uh, jamming that there. But, you know, I mean, Fury is just a three-toughness creature um, where you could run into some problems. But, all right, there's Blood Moon for the Saga. But as it stands, this Lightning Bolt will put Sprouts to five. This attack will put him to three. You're in second Bolt range. Uh, this list, I guess, only does yeah. play one, so that's not a thing. But And with the Ley Line, you can't breach it. Yeah. That's why I really would have wanted to get the Fury down, but yeah. I imagine Kane is also scared of an opposing like Fury scam and wants to play the second Fury. And there was some weird subsets where if you think of that Thassa's Oracle as a grape shot, like maybe it does more damage if you amass uh, some spells here to close it out, but honestly just the attacking with Oracle presents about the same amount of damage that you can muster if it's allowed to live for a couple of turns. And now Sprouts Probably thinking about potentially using a Fury, Fury. to kill a Thassa's Oracle. <laughs> I think I'd pick Oracle. I mean, knowing the hands, it's definitely Oracle, because Emery would get recast. But that locks you out of any combo scenario. Um, and the one thing, I don't think Sprout necessarily knows about the Lightning Bolt. So, oh man, must be nice. Must be nice. Kane's playing with your deck list and somehow got your luck here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cast that expressive. Good call. I am in agreement on this play. I would like to find a Raghavan. Oh, baby. <laughs> yes, monkey business afoot. Yeah, if you see Raghavan, that's pretty much GG. That'd be the card I'd be looking for, too. I would like to dash a Raghavan and hit a lightning bolt off of Sprout's deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would just be unfair. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, here is the, the duality of these Breach decks. You know, Leyline and Blood Moon, that is a big slap you in the face saying you will not be comboing. But that's, the, that's why this deck is, in my opinion, the best deck in the format. Um, because you can just attack from so many different angles. And there's no clear 
card, even to this day, with Breach being around for how long we've we been playing this deck, you know, like six months or something, there's no one card that I think would be like, God, just don't have that in their 75. You know, like, there's there's cards that are scary. Blood Moon, Dress Down, Ley Line. But they're all avoidable with the other game plan of the deck. You know? It's like uh, Kane found another land and an Aether Spellbomb, which is interesting. We might yeah. see only one creature attack, so you could leave that up, potentially. I think I'd just get in there at this point. But, yeah, I think it's interesting. Because, yeah, I mean, you look at... I mean, if this game's gonna go super long... Maybe there's a world where Kane could actually mill mill himself yeah. enough, you know, well, and do this, but this game goes super long. Kane might time out in game two because he's got six minutes on his clock right now. That's the price you pay sometimes with Breach, not gonna lie. I've uh I've definitely been on the edge of being like, all right, I'm I'm up a game, but I have to win this game. I have to 2 0 because I will time out. And oh. that's that's unfortunate for um just the way Breach is online. You know, it's not a it's not a heinous combo, like copycat combo. That one's truly bad. But it's close. You know, like you gotta you gotta get it down. You gotta know how to set the stops and stuff. Um, and it's it's kind of annoying. Upstairs. Yeah, Kane I was wondering if like do you want to play around a scam here? I guess you do because now I guess you have Fury on Holy Heat, so I think you go for it. Now they can just take the unholy heat scam, take the fury, and you're staring down a four three. Yeah. I think I would have did the same play, but I don't know if it's correct. I think I would have let them take the bolt. But because I think they have to take the fury is the problem, because you have got fury with spell bomb now. Yeah. I guess you need a land for that. Yeah, you need a land for that. And I mean there is a world where at worst, I mean at the biggest pinch, Sprouts can just double fury these creatures away right now. It's not great, but it is an option. Well, the, the spell bomb is still there. Yeah. But you can at least target them both. Yeah. And then Thassa's Oracle is not uncastable, but it's getting closer. I mean, the Sprouts is sitting on three Furies and an Abraid. Sprout has had some frustrating draw steps the last, like, four turns to keep Kane in this game where, or the you know, the groundwork was set for Sprouts to be able to just kind of wreck him, but has just drawn awkwardly, but that is exactly what happens with this Rakdos scam deck and why I will never play it. <laughs> because, you know, some draws look insane. Some draws look like complete garbage. And your opponent's not disrupting you in any way, shape, or form. And your deck sometimes just doesn't function. You know, there are garbage draws with Breach too, but, you know, then all of a sudden you just draw one expressive iteration. Your opponent could just be dead. You know? <laughs> like Interesting decision. I assume you gotta take one of the Fury and Unholy Heat. Because yeah. Breach and Emery are, are so locked down by the ley line, but yeah, I wouldn't. I, Breach is the only card I'm for sure not taking. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm leaving on Holy Heat too. And then Breach on Holy Heat, I think you're pretty just locked in to take Fury here. But it, it is it is close and interesting. Yeah, I would I would agree. Fury being a threat too when you're on such a low life total. Make sure you don't have to deal with that. Yeah, especially if you draw land six with Fury plus Spell Bomb, where you have to then find two essential removal spells for it. That can be pretty tricky. Really, Sprouts has been looking for one of those scam cards this entire game. Yeah. Just hasn't found one. And here's one of the one aspects where I absolutely love Fable in this deck is these kind of weird games where your opponent's really heavy hating on the combo because then you naturally have dead cards. All breaches are dead. Unholy heats are usually pretty bad. They're just shocks. And when you can just loot those two away, get two fresh cards and have two creatures that go from it. Is that a Raghavan? That is a wow. Raghavan. That was a nice draw. This is a lethal attack, but the Abrade will deal with the Raghavan. And Sprats will fall to two. Well, yeah, the Abrade does just put Ragavan back into the hand with the mm -hmm. spell bomb here. I I think I would leave that up to deal with a scammed creature. No, I would I would smack that in immediately, and then you still have unholy heat to deal with a scammed yeah. creature. Kind because of. You, you don't have you don't have delirium. You yeah, can't yeah, deal yeah. with a scammed fury. Yeah, Scam that's true. Scammed fury is just going to be good, I would think, but. I think with a backup Emery in hand, putting your opponent to two, you have lethal in play. Yeah. Just make sure that they can't Fury scam you. I like this. Okay, okay. 
because I think that's really Sprouts' only path back into the game, even with even not seeing their hand. I think yeah. even from Kane's side of the battlefield, that's the only conceivable way back into the game. I mean, one thing that we haven't seen is like just season Pyromancer, discard two cards, get two creatures. That would be pretty devastating. I don't think it's in this list, but no, it's in but, most of them. Uh, this is open deck list instead of Pyro. Oh, it does have three season Pyromancer yeah. and two Fable. Yeah. So I mean, that would be pretty devastating, but instead draws a grief, which is horrible. Scam getting scammed here. You have to Fury or you're just dead on the spot. Yeah. And even then, it's like, I guess that's for call. You, you know about the Emery. So you're furying the Thoracle here. Yeah. And. Uh, Does seem like Kane's going to be in that spot where if he loses this game, he's probably going to lose due to the clock. Welcome to Breach. <laughs> <laughs> no wiggle room in this deck, I'll tell you that. And here's the problem, though. You don't know if you're getting scammed until after this removal goes away. Oh, then. Well, Kane's just going to be like, you got yeah, it. Yeah, Emery, you <laughs> That's dead. Emery, uh, you're, you don't care about it at all. I've got a replacement, yeah. so. Yeah, I'll let that happen. <laughs> this is this is quite the quite the set of games. This is exactly how most breach games win with Fast <laughs> oh, Oracle. <laughs> oh, there, there's just another rock of it. That'll make this easy. <laughs> I was really hoping this was going to be a Fast Oracle win. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, this is how you usually win with Fast Oracle. <laughs> See, it does everything. It attacks. It blocks. It has a triggered ability. It does it all. It's the best deck <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. It's the best deck ever. I Undefeated. absolutely love breach. <laughs> Can't lose. <laughs> nobody, nobody can possibly lose when it comes to breach. That's game. Sneaky Masato takes it down, and we're completely unbiased when it comes to what decks we want to see win. And let me tell you, that was just breach going at high efficiency <laughs> right there. Gotta love it. Up top, breach is on the scoreboard. Too easy. Too easy. Kane. Go